Maxim Schnarr from ISO Swords, uh, making a small video today to uh, address a myth that's been um, um, carried around about small swords, about military small swords especially. So that's the subject of the video today. We're examining three different French small swords, military small swords. So the thing is that a lot of people believe that military small swords needed to be these really sturdy, really larger blades that could, you know, parry a bayonet with, uh, which is not quite what uh, the reality is, actually, when you look at the spherical pieces. So you have three different ones here from three, uh, well, let's say two different eras. Uh, so the first one that I have is this typical 18, uh, 1740s, uh, I would say, French um, military small sword. So how do I tell as a small sword? So this is a actually a type. This is not a model or a pattern. So what we what we uh, when we say type, it's usually because there's a very popular kind of non-regulation sword that you could call a pattern because it comes back with regular um, uh, with regular form and certain. And, uh, and a certain era, but there's no official patterns for it. And this is one of them. So this is what a lot of people call 1740 type. Uh, so what tells you that this, this is a military small sword? Well, first off, the very, um, very blank, very, uh, very practical uh, hilt on it. Uh, this is the most telling aspect. So all brass, hilts like these tend to be military pieces. Uh, they were easier to clean, easier to take care of than steel hilts, or, uh, and of course they were cheaper than uh, would be the uh, um, silver hilts. And so they've got these typical uh, military form to it. And the blade on it is very short as well, which also indicates a military use. So uh, a foot officer probably carried this around on his bandolier. So uh, a smaller sword, so that would be as uh, so it wouldn't uh, bump around on the ground or people around you. Uh, and you could still use it on a battlefield to direct people to fight uh, if needed to, uh, mostly in duels. So very thin blade. That's very much like some of the civilian versions you would see. Uh, a little bit of a thick 4A, but not especially. This is no Kalashmard blade. Uh, so Kalashmard, where and you've probably seen this before if you watch Maddie's videos. So Kalashmard were not meant as military blades. They were usually civilian, and the reason why they have larger 4A is actually because it allows you to parry uh, with a different, larger angle. So the blade, when you parry, actually goes farther away from you uh, than it would with a regular narrow blade. That's the reason why. Not to be more sturdier, to deviate the blades more. Right? So one example, very thin blade. Again, not a military blade, but not very different from a civilian version. And I have here two 1767 blades. And instantly, you'll see that the blades on them are extremely different. Uh, the, this one is probably General Staff. So it has this longer blade on it. So you can see here, a little bit longer than the other one. Uh, but very slim, narrow blade. Again, we would see very common on, um, on the uh, civilian Small swords, uh, very big guard in this one, so which is common as well on general staff swords. So moving back to the last one, and this is what a lot of people would probably consider to be a military small sword, because it's got this extremely wide uh, blade on it that's actually wider than most Petroon. And if you've seen some of my other videos, you'll probably recognize the blade. This is actually a 
a bit of saw blade. So I've got my 1680 pattern, or we would call it, uh, a bit of dub. And as you'll see, so whereas this blade is a little bit more um, rusted, of course, this one is very, very similar. So a little bit longer, probably because it hasn't been used quite as much. Um, but otherwise, the blade profile is exactly the same. So why does the officer blade has a soldier blade to it? Uh, and actually coming from a pattern that was um, that was actually removed from service at that time. So many reasons why this could be. Uh, maybe there was an armor that had a few bits of the blade left in his inventory and wanted to, uh, instead of having to send them away or rework them to something else, wanted to um, sell them. So he had them fixed to the new regulation pattern sword for officers and sold them as a more uh, truss, uh, cut and truss, sturdier blade for military service. Maybe that was it. Or maybe this was an officer who really liked the sword and so wanted to have it on his 1767 pattern. So maybe that's it. So again, three very different military small swords as you can see. Two of them with very thin blades, one of them with a more beefy blade. So the blade actually means nothing. I've seen all sorts of blades in military small swords going from the uh, Kalishmarad, uh, going to the triangular blade that you, you often see on, on uh, mid 18th century small swords, Zangle blades, uh, larger blades like these, cut and cross blades. So all sorts of blades, uh, it doesn't mean anything. You can have all these blades on military small swords uh, regardless. So I hope this was uh, informative. And if you have any questions, please post them below. And uh, by the way, most of these swords are for sale on my website, on iSellSwords.com. So if you're interested in any of them, please uh, visit. Uh, I have the link down below. So thank you again, guys, and uh, see you later.